closed off while you're sleeping, causing your sleep to be disrupted. When a person sleeps, the muscles of the throat relax, leading to a slight narrowing of the throat. This is normal and for most people not a problem. However, in some cases the narrowing is so great that the person's breathing becomes difficult. Snoring is caused by the effort to force air through the narrowed air passage, and loud snoring can be a symptom of obstructive sleep apnea. When the lungs try to pull air through that narrowed airway, the breathing passages may collapse, uh, much as a straw will flatten and collapse if you pinch one end while sucking on the other. When the throat narrows or closes, the brain senses the interruption and briefly awakens in order to signal the muscles of the throat to fully open. Once awake with a fully open throat, the effort to breathe decreases and the person resumes sleep. And the cycle of falling to sleep, throat narrowing, interference with breathing, and waking repeats itself. Uh, this cycle can disturb sleep dozens to hundreds of times each night, and most awakenings are so brief that they're not remembered. You've already noticed an impact on your lifestyle. Uh, not sleeping soundly, morning headaches, and uh, daytime drowsiness that affects both work and social activities. But there's more to it than that. Being drowsy during the day can lead to car accidents, and obstructive sleep apnea puts you at risk for high blood pressure, heart failure, heart attack, and stroke. You may not have all these symptoms, but if you have some, you may have obstructive sleep apnea. Obstructive sleep apnea can be detected with a sleep study. The technologist then observes snoring, restless sleep, frequent awakenings, and stopping breathing episodes. These observations are also collected on the polysomnogram. Notice how with the onset of sleep, movement stops in the airflow channel even though the person continues to move their chest in an effort to breathe. This is the obstructive apnea. Breathing can't resume until the person wakes up, shown by the changes here on the electroencephalogram. Proper treatment can prevent or reverse the serious consequences associated with obstructive sleep apnea syndrome. For some people, lifestyle changes such as weight loss, not sleeping on their back, or avoiding smoking, alcohol, and sedatives can reduce or eliminate sleep apnea. Prosthetic devices, called oral appliances, can be worn during sleep to keep the airway open by holding the tongue or jaw forward. And in some cases, where more conservative options have not worked, surgery may help. These choices are suitable mainly for people who have mild to moderate apnea. The most effective therapy is called Positive Airway Pressure, or PAP. This device introduces just the right amount of pressurized air through the nose or nose and mouth to prevent airway collapse. Most patients require only air, not oxygen. Properly set and used whenever you sleep, PAP machines can eliminate your apnea and snoring so that you get a good night's sleep. Various PAP machines and masks are available. Each person needs the combination of equipment that works best for him or her. A special mask is selected that fits securely but comfortably over your nose or nose and mouth. A large variety are available. Most people use PAP machines that deliver a continuous fixed amount of pressurized air called Continuous Positive Airway Pressure, or CPAP. Your PAP machine needs to be carefully adjusted to provide the proper amount of pressurized air during all of your sleep positions. To determine the amount of air pressure that is right for you, a sleep center technologist will monitor your sleep while you are using a PAP device and adjust the air pressure from the PAP machine until your apnea is eliminated. If you have trouble breathing out against the continuous air pressure of CPAP, a two-level machine called bi-level PAP may be called for. These machines sense when you breathe in and when you breathe out, delivering a different air pressure for each part of the breath. Self-adjusting machines monitor and vary the pressure each breath to deliver just enough pressure to keep the airway open. Obstructive sleep apnea can often be controlled completely with a PAP device, but you must use it whenever you sleep. Getting used to sleeping with a PAP machine takes time. While at first you may find it inconvenient, you shouldn't give it up without a good try. The benefits of successful treatment are well worth the effort. Effective treatment of sleep apnea can make a big difference in the way you feel and in your future health. Research has shown that many people with sleep apnea are excessively sleepy, have memory loss or other problems thinking, or suffer from depression. The sleepiness can make you more likely to have an automobile accident or on-the-job injury. Evidence is also mounting that high blood pressure can be caused or made worse by sleep apnea, 
and apnea increases the likelihood of having a stroke or heart attack. Successful therapy with PAP or one of the other treatments will eliminate sleepiness, improve the quality of your life, and can prevent these complications. It took me a while to get used to the CPAP, but now I take it with me wherever I go. I wouldn't sleep without it. I feel better, I have more energy, and I'm more alert at work. Well, the CPAP has made a big difference. He's less irritable, more fun to be with. And I'm finally getting to sleep through the night and getting the rest I need, too. I had been, for a number of years, I've been having problems with snoring at night. Um, my wife could initially just tap me, get me to turn over, and it would stop. And then we got to the point where I was snoring no matter what position I was in. And we were still doing okay. Um, but then I had an upper respiratory infection. And so my snoring got so bad, she could not stay in the bedroom, same bedroom with me at night, and it was bothering her sleeping downstairs. And so we decided I'd best do something about it. What actually brought me to the sleep study was uh, going to my physician, uh, who referred me to an ear, nose, and throat physician uh, to talk to me about the snoring problem and so on. Uh, I thought maybe I could get some surgery or something to help, and his initial uh, response was that he wanted me to go see someone in the sleep study lab, uh, which I did. Uh, I didn't know exactly what to expect. Um, of course, I'd never used a CPAP before. Uh, I was a little concerned that I wouldn't be able to fall asleep very easily, uh, but I did. I, you know, I was all hooked up to the wires and had the videotape running. Uh, I didn't stay up extra late the nights before either. I just came in on a regular Saturday, Sunday evening and, and I fell asleep uh, pretty quickly. Uh, so first of all, my wife could sleep well. Um, and I slept much better, I think, uh, initially there, although the mask bothered me until I switched over to the pillows. I did have, it was a number of days, weeks maybe, that every time I'd go to sleep, I'd have to get used to breathing against or breathing out against that, that air pressure. Um, after a period of time, I don't know how long, maybe a few weeks, months, uh, I put it on and I never even noticed that anymore. Today when I put it on, I wouldn't notice it. But it's been a very positive thing and I wouldn't go without it. Your sleep study is an important tool in helping your healthcare professional diagnose and treat any possible sleep disorder. The procedures are painless and an emphasis is put on making your sleep study experience as comfortable as possible. If indicated, you will be assisted in trying a positive airway pressure machine. Treatment can prevent or reverse the serious consequences associated with obstructive sleep apnea. Your sleep study is the first step towards improving your sleep, your health, and the way you feel.